Hello and welcome to Easter Egg Hunting, a show that dissects your favorite games looking for hidden secrets and Easter eggs. We're gonna try our hardest to show you any and all Easter eggs that we can find in any game, and we'll even be throwing in a bit of trivia as well. We've now reached part two of our long, long journey through the main series Mario titles, and last time we left off at the beginning of Super Mario Bros. 3, so let's just not waste any more time and get straight on with the rest of it. Bowser's sub-bosses, the Koopalings, were originally designed after the Japanese development team, but were not given any distinct names in the Japanese release. They were just collectively referred to as the Seven Kakoopa. Then, upon the US release, the American localization team came up with names for them, each derived from musical artists. Iggy Pop, Morton Downey Jr., Lemmy Kilmeister of Motorhead, Roy Orbison, Wendy O. Williams, U2 drummer Larry Mullen Jr., and finally, Ludwig van Beethoven. Visual quirks such as Ludwig's hair and Morton's star-shaped mark might have been cute the localization team took to name each of them. These names were eventually adopted for the Koopaling characters in Japan as well. Worth pointing out as well is that the Super Mario Bros. 3 and Super Mario World animated series that followed the Super Show also featured the seven Koopalings, known as the Koopa Kids at the time, but did not use their American-made names for the series as they were not created yet. Instead, the show creators at Deke Entertainment created their own unique names for the characters. Iggy and Lemmy became Hip and Hop, Wendy O became Cootie Pie, Morton Jr. became Big Mouth, Roy became Bully, Larry became Cheatsy, and Ludwig became Kooky. Defeating one of the Koopalings under certain circumstances actually unlocks some interesting dialogue from the kings of each world in the game. Several new power-ups were introduced in the form of suits that Mario or Luigi could wear. The king will mistakenly believe that Mario has been transformed into a frog if he is wearing the frog suit. He will believe Mario is an actual raccoon if he's wearing the tanuki suit. And if Mario is wearing the hammer suit, he'll ask to borrow Mario's clothes. The ghostly Boo enemies introduced in Super Mario Bros. 3 are based on the wife of Nintendo developer Takashi Tezuka. While she was normally viewed as a very shy and interesting Inverted person, she had an explosive temper that was triggered by the high amount of time Tezuka was spending at work. In reference to this unexpectedly scary change in emotions, the boos were programmed in-game to normally be shy when in the player's line of sight, but then would turn scary and aggressive once you've turned your back on them. The Chain Chomp also has a terrifying personal story behind it. As a child, Shigeru Miyamoto was being chased by a neighbor's angry dog, but the dog's chain yanked it back and kept it from attacking him. The chains that are attached to the Chomps are in reference to this real-life incident from the creator's youth. Now, in Super Mario Bros. 3, if you let a Chain Chomp tug on its chain 49 times, it will actually break free. The Chain Chomps nearly first appeared in a Legend of Zelda game, but were saved for later and eventually made their first appearance in World 5 of Super Mario Bros. 3. On that note, a number of the world maps hold some interesting trivia. World 7, Pipe Maze, is comprised of three islands that are shaped like the classic green pipes, and World 3, Seaside, has a disconnected island where the castle lies on the far right side of the world map, in the shape of Japan. The castle is even located in a spot that would represent Kyoto, where Nintendo's headquarters are stationed. There was also the lesser known World E from the Super Mario Advance 4 remake of Super Mario Bros. 3 for the Game Boy Advance, which features an island shaped like a lowercase e, in reference to the e-reader cards needed to access it. Lastly is a peculiarly placed Christian cross made of blocks in World 6-4. It's completely out of the way and can only be seen if you fly up to it with a P-Wing, since there's not enough surface to get a running start and fly with a normal leaf or tanuki suit item. Some fans might interpret it as a subliminal message, but it's most likely just a joke by the developers, similar to the pixelated naked woman made of blocks in Kirby's Dream Land 2. And now we're going to jump into the world of 16-bit on the Super Nintendo with Super Mario World. Super Mario World led to the premiere of an important new staple character for the franchise, Yoshi the Dinosaur. Yoshi was a concept planned all the way back from the original Super Mario Brothers by Miyamoto himself, but the technical limitations prevented Mario from having an animal companion. Graphics designer Shigafumi Hino helped to design Yoshi for the first 16-bit Mario game on the Super Famicom, and interestingly enough, Yoshi was at one point going to be a type of friendly Koopa, as opposed to a dinosaur. This is why his saddle and actually resembles that of a tiny Koopa shell. Also worth mentioning is that according to a 1993 Nintendo character guide, Yoshi's full name is T. Yoshisaw Muncha Koopas. One thing that's easy to be overlooked is that the seemingly random symbol on the mailbox of Yoshi's house is actually the logo for Japan's postal service. Another location near the start of the game, the Yellow Switch Palace on Yoshi's Island, is actually called Kappa Mountain. Kappas are mythological creatures that have bowl-like depressions on their heads that can hold water. Comparing the small cliff with grass and a pond in it as you climb up the mountain, it resembles that of a kappa's head. 
As mentioned previously, the Koopalings were named after musicians by the Nintendo of America localization staff, and similarly, the new Triceratops-like enemies, Resna, found in the four fortresses of Dinosaur Land, are named after singer-songwriter Trent Resna. As expected, certain bits of text are changed between the English and Japanese releases of the game, such as Bowser's name being labelled as Koopa on his castle, but one particular Japanese cultural reference can still be subtly found in the game. The bonus stages found throughout the game where you must hit three blocks in a certain order to get an extra life confirm that you've hit the right block with a circle. In Japan, a circle is generally used as a symbol of confirmation, as opposed to a check mark. Probably the most bizarre alteration between the different regional versions of the game is that in the original Japanese game, Yoshi is capable of eating the jumping dolphins that appear in Vanilla Secret 3 and in a hidden area near the end of Chocolate Island 1. This was added back into all regions of the Game Boy Advance port, Super Mario Advance 2, Super Mario World. Super Mario World introduced several new enemies to the series that would stay for many games to come. One such enemy was the lava monster, Blarg, which players would recognize from the later stages of Vanilla Dome. That said, the Blargs actually make an appearance earlier in the game in a section of Vanilla Dome's first stage when Mario must run across a sinking platform. It's just not likely that you'll encounter one. Blargs later appeared with a heavy redesign in Yoshi's Island for Super Nintendo, and were meant to reappear in Super Mario 64 with their original Super Mario World designs, but were unfinished. A work in progress animation of a Blarg can be seen in Mario 64 through hacking. The game also has big boo enemies, which are generally thought to be impervious to attack unless you have something to throw at them. However, it is actually possible to kill the big boos without throwing objects. It can be done by sliding down the staircases directly into the big boos, or by using the feather cape power up by gathering enough speed for a glide and then doing a slide attack along the ground right into it. One haunting area in Super Mario World is the Forest of Illusion. This area is quite an oddity, and not just because it's the only world that isn't named after any type of sweet. In the Japanese version of the game, this world is identified as Mayoi no Mori, which translates to the Forest of Becoming Lost, and can be interpreted as Lost Forest or Lost Woods. The Japanese title of the Lost Woods in the Legend of Zelda series is also called Mayoi no Mori. As Mario and Zelda games share connections in their creation, it's possible the names of these woodlands are in reference to each other. In the secret special world that is only unlockable after finding your way through Star Road, the map screen contains a couple of fun secrets. The symbol above the flashing word special is actually the Super Famicom symbol, with each color representing the four buttons on the Super Famicom controller. Also, if the player waits for two minutes on the map screen, letting the background music continue to play, it will eventually switch to a funky remix of the original Super Mario Bros. theme. And just before we wrap this episode up, let's have a quick dive into the next console up, the Nintendo 64, where we're going to be having a look at Super Mario 64. Super Mario 64 is notable for being the first Miyamoto developed game to feature Charles Martinet as the voice of Mario, who had already been performing the character for trade shows with Nintendo's real-time animation system, as well as the first ever Mario game he starred in, Mario's Fundamentals. Martinet recorded a number of voice clips for the game, including several that were added to the American port of the game that fans will definitely recognize, such as the Hello! on the title screen, let's go upon choosing a level, and even Mario's sleep talking after the player leaves him idle for a few minutes. 1990. Ah, spaghetti. Ah, ravioli. Ah, mamma mia. Right at the very start of the game, you can enter water in the castle courtyard to find a secret. Occasionally, when you jump up and down out of a shallow pool of any body of water in the game, a fish will actually splash out amidst the water particle effect. The Japanese version of Mario 64 also features a different painting for the third stage, Jolly Roger Bay, which is a picture of some bubbles with a blue rim. The American version changed this to a picture of the level sunken ship, and then the bubble version of the picture was later used in all versions of Super Mario 64 DS. There is also a star in Jolly Roger Bay that was changed to being hidden inside of a box for the American version, as opposed to it just being simply left right out in the open. Again, Super Mario 64 DS sides with the Japanese version and leaves the star out in the open. Thank you so much for watching and please let us know if we've missed any easter eggs. And also please do keep in mind that we only just started Super Mario 64 so if we've missed anything from that game it's probably going to be started off in the next episode. And also we're going to be covering more of the main series Super Mario titles as this video series goes on so if there's any of your favourite games or easter eggs that haven't been covered yet they're most likely going to be covered in the future. And also if you want to see more videos done by myself which aren't quite like this then you can have a look at my channel by clicking on the link on the screen right now which will take you to um, a review I did of a 
Christian-based PC racing game called The Zoo Race. Um, it's it's as bad as it sounds. Um, trust me, you, you're gonna have to see it. You won't you won't believe it.